two, three brief uh, comments from the website, you know. Most of these comments which we are reading out before our audience are mostly on the NDTV website itself after the program was aired. I think more than 60-70% of these comments are taken from there, while a few are from other famous websites which we know of. We have Abdullah Baisa who says, I weren't even watching that channel before, but when I came to know Dr. Zakir, too, will be there direct, I expected much at least to give him chance to explain the things which those people don't know. I'm sad, really sad. We have Shabazz Siddiqui who says, Yeah, exactly you watched it because of Dr. Zakir Naik, but there was nothing from him because he was not given a chance to speak and NDTV got the viewers. A nice plan made by NDTV. Media really sucks. And Danish Khan says, Dr. Zakir did a great job. Got to see his patients today. Three cheers for him. Can we have some final comments on this from some of our brothers here? And any queries for Dr. Zakir? Yes, brother. The aim of this program of ours was to expose the double standards of the media, I suppose. Uh, do you think we have reached the aim that is number one? And another thing is, how do we reach out to the people who are watching NDTV? I mean, this will be aired on Peace TV. What about the viewers who are hooked on to NDTV? How do we reach this exposed matter to them? As far as have we reached or have we achieved the goal? Yes, to a great extent. To a great extent, yes. How can we reach the viewers of NDTV? I feel besides this being aired on Peace TV, it will be aired even on other channels. Surely NDTV will not accept it. Surely, they aren't that bold. What we can do, we can paste it on the internet, on the YouTube, and make it popular. So that's one way who the seekers of truth. As far as everyone who has watched this program will not be able to see it. But what we fail to realize, that the viewership of Peace TV, according to me, is far more than the viewership of NDTV. NDTV may have more viewership in India, but Peace TV is an international channel which has more than 100 million viewers. So in terms of that, the Peace TV viewership is bigger. And our main aim is not only to let the viewers of NDTV know about it. Viewers of all the satellite channels should know. So anyone who is a TV watcher, who watches normal channels which have talk shows, they would be aware that when they watch a talk show, what is behind the scenes. We have a brother here, Smarty S. He says, I'm confused here. There are hundreds of videos of Mr. Zakir Naik openly saying against India and praising terrorists. He also says 9-11 was done by Americans, not by some jihadis. Why are my Indian Muslim brothers supporting him instead of SRK or Madni Sahib who are standing against terrorism? I think Dr. Zakir would be the best one to answer that. I would that. like Smarty S to point out a single talk of mine where I have spoken against India. I always say I'm proud to be an Indian. I'm proud to be a Muslim also. I'm proud to be an Indian Muslim. As far as supporting terrorists, in fact, we even the talk on terrorism. And the Quran clearly mentions in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32, that if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. So killing any innocent human being, according to the Quran, is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. I'm totally against a person terrorizing any innocent human being. What he may be saying, who he thinks is a terrorist, and who I say I don't know. So if I don't know, and I've got no proof that the person is a terrorist, I cannot condemn him. That doesn't mean I'm supporting terrorism. What I'm saying, that who they call as a terrorist, there isn't any sufficient proof to call that person a terrorist. But terrorizing innocent people in all ways has to be condemned, and Quran and Islam condemns the killing of any innocent human being. Jazakallah, brother. May we have two or three questions from the brothers? The next question from the brother in the front. What is the Muslim identity and is it required? As far as the whole talk show on we the people, the Muslim identity is concerned, I don't think the talk show did justice. What is the Muslim identity? And if you want to know what the Muslim identity is, you have to go to the authentic sources. 
that is the Quran that say hadith. And as far as the Muslim identity is concerned, identity means the person should identify. The practice of Muslim are many. You should be honest, you should not cheat, you should not tell a lie, etc., etc. But identity means a label. And the label for a Muslim is, as per mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, in the book of death, hadith number 5892, that the beloved Prophet said, that do the opposite of what the pagans do. Trim your mustaches and let your beard grow. So growing the beard is the commandment of the Prophet. And that is one of the identity of the Muslim. It's a sunnah. Some people call it fard, the difference of opinion. But no one says that it is not part of Islam, except those people who don't have knowledge of Islam. And the other identity is covering the head. The Prophet always, whenever he went out, he always covered his head. Sometimes with a helmet, sometimes with a turban, sometimes with a cloth. Covering the head is the sunnah of the Prophet. And this can be seen in various hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 7, in the book of dress, chapter number 16. As well as Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 7, in the book of dress, hadith number 5807, where the Prophet covered his head. Though it's not a fard in Islam to cover, it's not compulsory in Islam to cover the head, it's a sunnah, it is recommended. So these two things covering the head, whether with a turban or with a cap or with a scarf, the gen scarf which is called as a gatra, and sporting a beard is the true identity of a Muslim. And if a person is proud to be a Muslim, he should be proud to wear the label. As I mentioned earlier, that a doctor is proud to put doctor before his name because he's proud to be a doctor. Similarly, a person who is a practicing Muslim and is proud to be a Muslim should wear the identity, the label of a Muslim that is the cap or a turban covering the head and sporting a beard. Yes, brother. Dr. Zakir, has your Muslim identity, the beard and the skull cap, ever been an obstruction for you, especially post 9-11? As far as the Muslim identity, the skull cap and the beard being an obstruction for me, as far as my colleagues or the people who are in the same field as me, that is propagation and giving lectures, I know most of my colleagues have been in tough situations, keeping a beard, wearing a skull cap, traveling to different countries, especially going through immigration. But as far as I'm concerned, Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, this cap and beard has never ever been an obstruction before 9-11, or post 9-11. In fact, it has benefited many times. Never was I in a situation where I felt that this is causing obstruction. Yes, there were situations which were delicate, especially when I traveled to different countries. And there were many occasions where they did question me. And especially the attire that I am, besides having a cap and a beard, I'm wearing a suit and a tie, it's a soft target. But this has always given me opportunity to do more dawah. I'd like to narrate one instance that when I'd gone to Los Angeles, post 9-11, 2001, I think it was in 2003, one and a half year after the 9-11 attack, I went to Los Angeles. And seeing in this attire, I was expecting that there would be special interrogation for me. And that's what exactly what happened. And they sent me to a special immigration officer and started questioning me. You know, telling me that what type of a Muslim are you? I said, I'm a Muslim. Are you a Wahhabi? I said, Wahhab is the name of attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm Abdul Wahhab. I'm a servant of Allah. And asking me that, what's the profession? I said, my profession is to spread the truth. Because Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Bible, seek the truth and truth shall free you. And this way the conversation went. And where the immigration office asked me, that why have you come here? I said, I've come to receive awards. So award for what? I said, for spreading the truth. And later on when I went to the customs, I purposely said that I've come to attend a conference. Oh, conference? Okay, go for checking. And later on when I went to the customs, I purposely said that I've come to attend a conference. Oh, conference? Okay, go for checking. And when they opened my suitcase, they found one of my DVDs, the title of which was Terrorism and Jihad and Islamic Perspective. And it showed a gun on the cover. 